Hello viewers, Super GT here. Thank you for joining me for another video. Now this one, coverage of the recent FIA races. This is the Nations Cup race here in the KTM Crossbow. This was going to be a really interesting race, this. So everyone in the same car. Qualified 10th, middle of the pack. And then this happened. Everyone left the room. The reality was that I left the room and then everyone else actually had the race. So uh, a nice big internet problem to kick things off. Unfortunately, got disconnected from the network. Can't bring you coverage of that race, which was shaping up to be an interesting one in uh, such an unusual car. But uh, okay, we go, we go across then to the Manufacturers' Cup in, of course, the Porsche. The, you just got passed by a girl Porsche. Away we go. I spent some time inside this guy, uh, interestingly, as we leave the pit lane. Now, I'm going to cut a long story short and let you know that I qualified really badly. The lap wasn't too bad, I didn't make too many mistakes, but it was good enough for precisely 18th out of 18. Not a good return. So of course, uh, plenty of work to be done. We can do a last to first challenge, I suppose, or last to question mark challenge. But anyway, roll that intro. Okay, so here we are then, at the beginning of the race. 10 laps at Catalonia in uh, Group 4, in the Porsche. So come around the final turn. So of course the field spread is absolutely huge with these uh, rolling starts. So the guy in the lead is pretty much coming into Turn 1 already and I've only just crossed the start line to start lap 1. As we then come up towards turn one, in the slipstream behind the Porsche and the Nissan, but there's not really much room for manoeuvre there. Could of course have gone sliding through the centre with a pair of them, but it would have been a risky move. Got Wi-Fi password here in front of us. The Nissan GCR, he has not had a good time qualifying either. As uh, the nervous Buddha with the penalty, and I'm going to go through the middle, threading the needle nicely, gaining two positions. Two positions gained after four corners, if we can continue that rate of improvement then we'll be in the lead in no time at all but now a big gap opening up 2.2 seconds to the German in 15th so the little sort of debacle between myself and the two guys behind not really uh, helping our cause and actually just looking at Wi-Fi passwords internet connection has actually only got one bar so the fact that he's got his Wi-Fi password on open display surely means that people are sort of stealing his Wi-Fi connection and he's down onto one bar already. Okay then, through turn nine, difficult corner of that, but a crucial one, because you're, you're of course going onto this middle straight into a very good overtaking opportunity. Um, one of two really good ones on the track, so of course the other one, turn one, both at the end of uh, the longest straights of the circuit. But you see already, definitely catching up with this group, who were holed up behind the Corvette there in 13th, and then another gap forward to going 12. So the gaps here are already being formed, but the, um, the pack is rather close in attention um, from 12th going forwards, which um, hopefully lends itself to being able to catch up with that battle later on. As we then finish lap one, go into hyperspace mode down the straight, the very long straight here at Catalonia, into turn one, and the Audi's had to bail out. I think he was going to slam into the back of the Aston Martin and he's done the honourable thing of sacrificing himself, sacrificing himself for the cause rather than wiping out his opponent. Bocker Burr's there with the bottle. You think I'm a bad bottle job and he takes it to another level and he's made yet another mistake. Very very fast but definitely mistake prone. So up to 14th. Actually this could be this could be going worse I suppose. Then again I should have qualified a lot better. Now, normally in even a, in a good FIA lobby, and there's lots of really good players. I say there's 20 players in a lobby. Normally I can still qualify uh, just outside of the top 10, or sometimes just inside the top 10. This time, uh, obviously, things are just really not going my way in qualifying. And well, my worst performance yet, actually, I would say, to qualify in 18th and dead last. Okay, so the Corvette just ahead, you can see that. Uh, serving the penalty when that big yellow bar fills up, then it's going to be served. Slamming up the inside of the Aston Martin, 
the space was there and the job is complete gaining another position so that was a good little couple of seconds there past the Corvette who served the penalty and then past the Aston Martin who was a little bit caught napping there into the hairpin so just seized the space and went for it and again just looking forwards you can see that there's a big group I'm now three seconds behind the tail ender of that group with still the Aston Martin close in attention behind only two terms and actually the Aston Martin very quick in the line the Porsche has never been a great straight uh, straight line speed car and that's going to lend itself then to the Aston Martin coming back past on the straight can I perhaps outbreak him into turn one would have been a stretch to kind of get that uh, move done so the Aston Martin settles back into 12th I'm back into 13th he's got a little bit wide through the exit of two which lends itself possibly to the undercut on the way out as he swings to the left there yes he does and he kind of tries to force me narrow on the way out but it's not going to happen as I'm fully alongside and on the inside for turn five and we retake the position all this is doing though really is just losing his time as I'm now three point five seconds behind the person in front good battling though overall respect shown and it's always good to see that so setting now into 12th position and uh, this is the end of lap number five now struggling for grip you can see just how bad my front left tire is it's pretty much 80% or 90% worn and so the life is completely drained from that tire I've absolutely murdered it so the leader comes into the pits some people went in at the end of lap four that's why I'm in 11th I gained two positions at the start of lap five as some people as, as two people came in okay so I'm on the medium at the moment and it looks like the medium of course it's quicker for the first couple of laps but it, I really suffered on that last lap really suffered as I was quite far away from the Aston Martin but then just caught up so I'm going to try on the hard and see how that goes instead I might be slower or I will be slower for the first couple of laps but then I'll be faster in the last couple of laps in the stint so hopefully that might be the better decision so on the way out of course the Aston Martin still ahead of us and just uh, scanning the map you can see just how big that group is it's a massive group of maybe like eight cars or more than that maybe ten cars in that group and that's really the aim the problem is I was kind of equal pace with that group but it's just that's it I was equal pace I was a couple of seconds behind them and then I could just never catch and obviously your cause this never helps when you bottle it completely and make silly mistakes like that the twitchiness of the controller really just getting the better of me there and unfortunately yes I dropped down to dead last and well that was it I couldn't really recover anything from there so last in qualifying and I know well two people quit but still last in the race of the finishers of the people who actually stuck around to the end so absolutely diabolical really 251 points what an absolute joke yeah not, not good indeed so there are the results, uh, not really worth looking at to be honest, but there is something that really did catch my attention and you might see it here, the guy in the lead was like 8 temps quicker, it was really suspicious because we know, and this guy was suspicious of it too, and we know that there's a potential cut here at Catalina on the final chicane. So I thought I'd analyse this guy's race, just see what was happening, you know, if I can't have a good result then at least I can kind of pin some sort of attention, negative attention on someone else instead. But anyway, let's just have a look at this because it was fairly interesting. So Firestorm goes through, he's driving the uh, Toyota 86. Uh, so this is Magic Mike, eight times quick and qualifying. You know, that's scintillating pace. But was it genuine? That's the question. Because it did seem a little bit suspicious. And after one lap, you see the gap already that Firestorm has opened out. That's like three seconds, three, four seconds. At the end of lap 4, Magic Mike comes in. Okay, so he's down in 14th, behind Wi-Fi password, gets, gets passed. So, lap 5, there I am in the orange car going into the pits. Okay, and then by this point here, he's back in 4th. But there's a massive queue. This is, the, this is on the map we were looking at this battle. There's about 8 cars on the Magic Mike Express, Express train through Catalonia. So he's holding up a massive pack in. I, I just regret that I couldn't be on the back of this train at least and maybe just gain a couple of positions because I think he was holding this whole group up. So down the main straight, let's just analyse this one. Rono, Rono Thomas here in the Huracan. 
uh, which in itself isn't a great straight line speed car, but it's got the slipstream, really good tow down the long straight here. Up the inside into turn one, and they kind of come together halfway through the apex, or halfway through the corner on the apex. Eventually, Thomas goes through, takes the position. It, look, it really looks like Magic Mike is on the back foot, really not reminiscent of a pole sitter at all. You know, normally a pole sitter would be very comfortable and commanding from the front of the race, from the front of the pack, but that just really is not the case here. He's just falling backwards through the pack. This is like if I qualified on pole in a FIA lobby, I would just be falling backwards towards the outer fringes of the top 10. So now he's down in sixth place, uh, under attack from Cobra, the Ukrainian, also in the Mustang, coming down towards turn number seven, and he's actually just bumped him. And on the way out, there's actually good, going to be uh, good sportsmanship here, because he's going to slow down off the throw a little bit and let Magic Mike go back through. It's a good sportsmanship there shown by Cobra M5. Coming through turn nine, this is on board with Spread Nuts. I love the name. As we come towards turn nine, into the hairpin, sorry, turn 10, into the hairpin. And Magic Mike's gone really deep. Big mistake. And Spread Nuts is going to go through. Is the Manus in the orange Porsche going to go through? He's looking for the move on the outside, not really giving Mike much space on the inside. Trying to squeeze him a little bit. But yeah, Magic Mike is really on the back foot. He's being assaulted. And then look at that. This confirms my suspicions. He is a corner cutter or an extender, depends what you want to call it. Or just a corner not to take her at all. Just completely avoid the whole chicane. And then on the way out, it's just really not, it's just not pretty at all. Making contact with the Italian Aston Martin guy there and getting caught up by Wi Fi password. But um, yeah, this, I mean, gets back past Wi Fi password. This is lap 10. And well, okay, there, there we go. We can see it there into the final chicane but no he's not going to take the chicane he's going to take the alternative layout uh, to put it bluntly or to put it nicely and on the way out again another shameful shameful move bam just punting the italian wide he's done nothing wrong but yeah that confirmed the suspicions there because he was on pole position obviously by virtue of cutting and then just absolutely shambolically performed during the race down to 13th Obviously, I'm not much better, but at least I was trying to <laughs> stick to the actual circuit. And normally, uh, the process here is when uh, we have a bad day in FIA, we try to round it off by having a good one, a good couple of races in the daily races. So this is, of course, daily race B from last week. This was a really weird little warm-up, and hopefully it wasn't a warm-up for the actual race, because coming through here, coming through the chicane of death, we survive. And this Frenchman is just going to absolutely murder me. So he's, he's turned this corner into the corner of death. So lots of death around here at uh, Dragon Trail Seaside. So that was the warm-up. Hopefully it wasn't a sign of things to come in these races. So I'm going to quickly go through two races here. Because on the exit of the final chicane, I just... It was really weird. I just made a massive mistake. The Super a little bit hard to get used to. No excuse though for that. Second race, uh, up behind the Spaniard here in fourth place, and well, yeah, guess what? Double death. We both kill ourselves on the apex, adding to the long list of victims. Now, I went for a long practice session here. You see the time on the bottom left 20 and a half minutes. I was on lap 13. And this is on top of all the laps I did before the two races that I just showed you. So, lots of time being put in here. Lots of time indeed. Now, what I thought I'd do, I'd watch the a qualifying time of the number one in the world. So uh, Williams for Varos, I think it was, at this point here. The Hungarian. Really, really, really quick on this game. Actually, yeah, it is his name because it says on the left. If you just look where he's shifting, he's shifting like third of the way across the rev gauge. And that I think that's crucial. Uh, it's always a good idea to watch the replays. But look at this livery. Absolutely love this livery. Real men drive with dual shock. Never a truer statement has been said in the history of the planet Earth. But here we go. Let's see if we can actually have a good race here. And we've got lots of DS races, because obviously my SR has dropped as a result of quitting one of those races. But that doesn't uh, make the race any easier, particularly at the front. Because if, as long as this guy here is fast, is fast, then we could still be in store for a very close race. Let's hope that is the case. Let's hope I can have a good one without bottling it completely. 
and making stupid mistakes as I typically tend to do. And this this track is very much one that lends itself to mistakes, especially of course through the chicane here, where it's very difficult to avoid them. Five laps in order, uh, five laps to get through in order to have a clean race, and it's not always easy to do that. So of course tucked in behind the Supra, the Supra here seems to be the new go-to car in Route 3. So of course the 911 was always that was the staple car of Route 3. But now it looks like the Supra has kind of taken over the reins a little bit. And of course we're just trying to maximise the Favaroche method of shifting very early. Dealing the duck very, very, uh, or very much squirming through the apex, for the final apex of the triple chicane. But just sticking into the lead. I'm not going to try for the move here. The best place to wait, the best place to go for the move is to wait uh, down the main straight, which is of course very long downhill and I can get the toe into turn one, which is probably the best overtaking place on the track. As we come through the final of the game, obviously trying to not repeat that mistake that we made before. He's moving to the right-hand side. He's fully aware of the slipstream, just trying to break the toe as much as possible. I'm gonna tuck right in, move to the right-hand side. He's blocked the left. This is gonna give me the inside for the kink, but then the outside for the actual proper turn one, which is here. And I've got briefly ahead, and enough so that I can tuck into the lead. Okay, so um, if we have a tick list for the race, number one is don't bottle lap one, just get through safely. Number two is put pressure on. And number three is actually get into the lead. So we've done those three things. The next, of course, is just churn out the laps and make sure we don't make any mistakes. Perhaps you could add to that tick list, break the toe. Get out of that slipstream. Um, especially by the time we get back to the main straight, that would be very, very useful. And then, uh, therefore, obviously, you won't be able to do a repeat or wider to him and go flying back past me into turn one on the next lap. So, of course, just trying to have a good lap here, just trying to make sure that we nail our apexes, our acceleration points, our braking points. And we're six temps be uh, away, or six temps ahead, or seven temps ahead now. If we can just get one more tenth for his final sector, that might be enough. I think eight tenths, and you're not normally within slipstream range in Group 3. That's kind of the buffer you need. And then they're not being sucked along in your wake. So final chicane here, got to keep it really far to the left through that uh, sweeper. And that gives you a much better drive on the exit of the right. Unfortunately, I didn't gain that tenth. In fact, I lost a tenth, down to six tenths now. Trying to break the tyre as much as possible, although it's not hard, and I'm not prepared really to start swerving across the, across the, across the track. It's not really worth doing. 39.5, I think decent decent race pace that. If you can lap in, into the 39s consistently, then that should be good enough to, to, to win races, or at least to be up at the sharp end. I haven't taken turn one as well as I would have liked, and he's now just three tenths behind, firmly within the slipstream range. Coming through the chicane of death, turned in a little late, although I was very brave with the se second apex. I kind of made up for it on the way out, almost grazing the wall on the exit. Into the long left. Very, very, you have to be very patient here, then get a straight drive out to get maximum traction and power onto this uphill straight. So the track has a really nice layout. It's basically got sort of three hairpins, edge of a, you know, it's basically a triangle, and then between each of the hairpins you have a different type of chicane so here we have the triple sweeping chicane of course we have the chicane of death and then at the end of the lap we have sort of the downhill long left into a sharper right so different types of chicanes three different types of chicane three different hairpins and then long straights in between so it's an interesting circuit and actually the more i play it the more i enjoy it but uh, uh, as we come towards the end of lap three he's still firmly there and uh, within two tenths of me. So definitely the gap is very, very small. He's very, very, very close and potentially within range here to go for a pass. Uh, three tenths down. I'm gonna move to the left. Um, I think this is the best place to move. I know you do have the inside for that kink, but you want the inside for the hairpin at the bottom of the hill. And I think I've done a slightly better job of hemming him in to the right-hand side there and not giving him a chance around the outside. So good defence, I think, into turn one. I have to move slightly defensive 
So basically the rule I play through that right hand, for this gentle right hander, if you just go a roughly three quarters of a car width away from the wall, then obviously you can't pass on the right because you're less than a car width. You've, less, le you've left less than a car width on that side. So he has to go to the left, which is the longer way around. And the more you can force him to the left, the the longer it is. So that's why I leave. I try to leave like three quarters of a car on the right, and therefore he has to go even further round to the left. And obviously he bailed out that time, so it wasn't the right decision to do. Just had to, you just have to do it early enough. Okay, so five tenths down now, half a second. So if I can just maybe open up that gap again, six tenths now, seven tenths. Okay, I, is it possible that I could open up eight temps? Because it is pretty much eight temps as we go into the braking zone on the downhill hairpin. It's, it's, well, it's more like a 90 degree or just over 90 degree corner. It feels a bit like a hairpin though. Back down to seven temps, he's, he's, I think he's got a better traction on the way out. So this race is really going down to the Y. He's, he set the fastest lap there, 39.1, which is uh, four temps quicker than I've managed, although slipstream assisted. It's hard to say exactly how quick that would have been. But as we go down the main straight, he's six tenths behind, which is, which is close enough for slipstream. He is still going to be benefiting from that. As we then come across the line, 39.7, so we've done a 39.5, 39.5, 39.7. That's a good consistency. And hopefully just one more lap here, and I will have myself a race victory. And then the shambolic display that we saw at Barcelona will be all but forgiven. So we'll see how that pans out. We've got to navigate the chicane of death one more time. We've been consistent through here, although this time not quite brave enough on the second apex. And he's one tenth behind. I'm going to have to move slightly defensive, take a slightly narrower line through the long left. And on the way out, actually he's, he's had a poor turn as well. So he's not going to keep the pressure on as we come up the hill over the crest towards the triple. Okay, through here, got to have a good one. And I think I was, on evidence of the previous laps, I think I'm slightly stronger through this uh, through this section. And this time around, yet yeah, not too bad. Could have gone throttle a little bit earlier. In, in fact, he's gained on this lap three taps, less than three taps, into the hairpin. Is he going to send it? No, he's not. So he's going to wait for the better opportunity. Less than two taps behind. I'm just monitoring that gap on the left of the screen. There he is. I'm going to have to go defensive into this chicane. Just make sure that I don't go deep into the turn and compromise my exit on the way out. Okay, the decent, the exit is decent. As we then have the run down towards the line, it's going to be close because he's in the slipstream. He's in the same car. So the extra speed is purely down to the slipstream. He's going to move to the right-hand side. It's a drag race to the line. I've squeezed him as far as I can go. And there it is, a win by 0.041. Oh, out of breath after that. Really close racing. Respect shown from both of us. And really enjoyable. And of course, I won it. So, <laughs> can't be too disappointed overall. But that was it. That was a, that was a really good race between the two of us. Yes, it, it was a slightly lower rated race. But it doesn't matter. Because we, had, we both had a great race there. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts as always, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for the support as always. Thank you for all my Patreon backers and channel members as always. And I shall see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.